So my topic this morning is forgive to live. And uh, I imagine people would wonder, what does that have to do with creating the abundance consciousness? And I tell you, it is absolutely an essential component if we want to have an abundant experience of life. I think this is really, really, really one of the keys. Now, we're not talking about that old, very traditional idea of forgiveness, which is kind of like a tit-for-tat kind of thing. Well, they did this, so I did that, so I need them to apologize, and then I'll forgive them, and then they'll feel bad, and I will gloat. You know how it goes, you know, all that, you know? It's not that. This is not that. This is why it's important for us to forgive people who have hurt us or done us wrong, and everybody's got some, I know, is, okay, it feels good in the moment when we don't forgive, but, we, it, but that not forgiving will never add to our lasting happiness or our expanding consciousness of abundance. It will not help. So the negative thoughts and those negative feelings and those words we want to say about people, they affect every part of our life. They affect us mentally. They affect our physical health. They affect our ability to succeed in life. They affect our self-worth. So forgiveness is not about the other person. So please hear that. First of all, it's not about the other person. We do it for ourselves. And I know when I talk to people about this on a one-on-one, -on -one, they always say, well, I feel like if I let them off the hook, if I forgive them, I'm condoning their bad behavior, and I'm inviting it again. I'm not saying any of that. This is none of that. You're just using that as an excuse to stay in your little bubble of unforgiveness, and it's limiting you. All forgiveness is an act of self-forgiveness. No, really, honest to God. This is how it works. All, and people always say, but what about self-forgiveness? I need to forgive myself. Yes! What an excellent idea! <laughs> what an excellent idea! Why are we making that so special? Because all forgiveness is an act of self-forgiveness. Had you not noticed that those people you don't want to forgive are out there boldly living their life? They are just audaciously going on about their business, not even thinking about you. They're just living and loving and carrying on. They've moved on to new relationships, new employees. They're probably in another state by now. All right? And yet we're still like, I'm still mad. I just can't get over it. I will never forgive them. All forgiveness is an act of self-forgiveness. Why? Because where does it exist? It exists in us. It's in our mind. It's in our heart. So forgiveness is spiritual maintenance. See, this, I think people have thought that forgiveness is like a one-time thing. And it's not. It's maintenance. It's like taking a shower every day, right? Every day you have to get up and take a shower to cleanse your body. And forgiveness is about daily cleansing your soul of anything that does not serve you on this spiritual journey. You know, it, it, it's, it makes room for the good that we desire. But the unforgiveness keeps the good that we desire at bay. You know, if you refuse to forgive, you are telling the universe, I I'm willing to wait for my good. I'm willing to wait for my life to get better. I'm willing to wait to prosper because I get so much value out of telling this story about how they done me wrong. That is just so juicy for me that I am willing to wait for my life, for my health, for my relationships, and for my abundance to get better. Boy, that seems like an awful high price to pay, doesn't it? just to keep telling some story about how we feel we were victimized. You know, what you deny another person, you are denying yourself, right? So when we have a story about someone or some situation and what that did to us or what they did to us, look, if guilt and blame and resentment are present in us, we will not feel worthy of, God, of, of the good that God has in store for us. Right? So unforgiveness is also a way of self-sabotage. Hmm? And people talk about, well, I'm, I must be doing something to sabotage myself. So we check in. Where am I not forgiving? Where am I not forgiving? This is, now, I don't take this lightly. Forgiveness is the hardest spiritual practice to master in the New Testament. If it's tithing in the Old Testament, and it is, it's forgiveness in the New Testament. Why? 
Why is that so hard? Because you know when it's been done to you or you feel like it's been done to you, we get such a good story about it, right? You know, and it's like we say, well, I understand everybody should forgive, but you know this, but what happened to me? Well, my situation is different. This is the unforgivable thing. You know, to love each other and to be in forgiveness with each other, that's the path, right? You know, this is what Jesus gave to humanity 2,000 years ago, and people still have a hard time forgiving. We think, well, he really didn't mean this situation. You know, he, he didn't have an ex like I do, you know. Or he didn't have a boss like I do. Look, we have to forgive freely, fully, and joyfully, you know. And so that includes all of our exes, all of our bosses, parents, children, on and on and on and on. See, because an incomplete ending inhibits a new beginning. An incomplete ending inhibits a new beginning. And so most often, when we have a problem with someone, they're not being the way we want them to be. Tell the truth. Right? They're just not being the way I want them to be. And I know that life would be so much better if they would just shape up and get with my program <laughs> that I have designed for them. Right? Well, it's not happening, is it? It is absolutely not happening. Um, and when I think about that, I think, well, for everybody who thinks they're not controlling, I think that applies to all of us, you know? Wanting people to be a certain way is sort of like the ultimate control. Please, allow me to have complete and total dominion over your life. Yes, that's what I'm here. See, people are who they are. You know, and every soul has its own unique journey. And everybody's waking up at the rate they are waking up. So in a number of classes that I teach, I teach this little prayer called the love prayer. And it goes like this. I accept you. I bless you. I accept you, I bless you. I accept you, I bless you. And both of those things people resist tremendously. And they say, well, I don't accept them. But their behavior is unacceptable to me. Oh, get over it now. OK, because your passing judgment on someone's behavior is unacceptable to you is not limiting them in any way. It is, in fact, limiting you. So it's time to just get off it. Right? To just let it go. I accept you. I bless you. I accept you. I bless you. And we just say that over and over again. If you think you have nobody for, to forgive, bless you. And I accept you. Uh, <laughs> if you think you have nobody to forgive, I want to suggest that you just randomly select a news station on TV and completely turn off the volume. Yeah, do this. This works. Turn off the volume and just stand or sit there and watch. Watch the TV and watch what's happening in you. Watch what comes up in your mind. Watch if there are accusations or judgments or harsh opinions. And, and right there is the spiritual work you have to do to open your life up to a greater experience of love and wholeness and health and prosperity. See, we want to accept and love people the way they are without judgment, as God does. Mm -hmm. So what people do or don't do, for the most part, is really none of my business. We've all heard that. We've all heard that. They're just living their life. Right? We are told in scriptures to judge not, which we usually interpret as, but not in this situation. He didn't mean this situation. He didn't mean this case. He didn't have this person as a relative. Right? If we're not directly involved, for the most part, it's best to just stay out of it and know that people are working out whatever they're working out. You know, there's, you know if, I, I'm going to go back to the TV thing. I notice that if I'm watching the news, there's some news event, the tendency, and I think this is very common, is to project guilt onto whoever is out there in the news, right? Oh, they're guilty. Well, when I say that someone else is guilty, that's more about me, and it's affecting me more than it is about them, right? So Jesus said to take care of your own business. I'm really paraphrasing here, you know, but to mind your own spiritual household first before you start dispensing wisdom on how other people need to live or shape up. See, I think we like to blame so we don't have to take responsibility. Isn't that so? It's so nice to be able to blame. 
What a wonderful, wonderful thing blame is, you know? Or so we have thought. The media, the media loves to assign blame, doesn't it? But blame solves nothing, you know? The question I think we have to ask ourselves is, how can I make this better? Or in a bigger, a bigger uh, pass would be, how can I make my life better? How can we make our lives better? You know, it's very much like you would say to a little child who's been hurt. Oh, come here, let me kiss it and make it better, right? How many of us, our mothers said that to us somewhere along the line? Come here, let me hug you, kiss it, let me kiss your boo-boo, I'll make it better, right? No matter what's going on in your life, it's always appropriate to ask, who must I forgive? Who, every day, every day, who must I forgive? Because the outside, it seems to me that the outside wakes us up, but we heal it on the inside. You know, so things happen out here in the world to show us where we need to go inside. And something else happens out here in the world to show me where I need to go inside. Oh, my gosh. You know, when I let go of the past, I can focus on how to be happy today. And isn't that what we really want? Do we want to live in the past? No, nobody really wants to live in the past. Even if you think the past was the best or you think the past was the worst, we don't want to live in the past. We want to live in today. Right? And we want to have a really happy experience of life today. And I want to be in total and complete forgiveness with everyone. And to me, that means no bad feelings at all. See, and now I believe it's true that no one can hurt you unless you allow them to hurt you. Nobody can make you feel bad about yourself unless you agree with it. Right? So no one can do to us what we're not already on some level doing to ourselves. <sighs> See? So if I say, well, you know, they betrayed me, and I just can't get past the fact that they betrayed me, what that shows me I have to do in my own spiritual work is ask that difficult question, how have I betrayed me? Where am I betraying what I know to be the best in me? Where am I not... Uh, where am I betraying the truth in me? Where am I not showing up for me the way I know I need to show up? See, because no one can take from you uh, unless you're taking, right? That's, that's how the principle operates. No one can disrespect you unless on some level you disrespect you because what we teach is that people are always showing up in our life and they are a mirror of some belief we have about ourselves. So no one can hurt you or undervalue you unless you are hurting and undervaluing yourself. You know, the old saying is, if you see um, a flaw in another person, it's your vision that needs the correction. That's a hard pill to swallow, isn't it? That's a hard pill to swallow. But I get it. People, people do horrible things sometimes. People do horrible things. We say, well, how can I possibly forgive that? You know, well, I think often we can't do it alone. Often we have to ask for help. And so, you know, what I do is I say, God, I know I need to forgive here, but I can't. I just can't seem to get past it. In fact, I'm, I'm like a dog with a bone. I'm just kind of obsessing on it and gnawing and gnawing and gnawing and going over and over. I say, so, God, you can forgive them, so forgive them through me. That, I find that to be the opening. Humanly, I can't do it, but I know that God, that spirit can. And so I say, okay, God, Forgive them through me. And what that does is that over time starts to soften the rigidness that's in my mind and, I, and in my heart. Um, the bottom line is people who do us wrong, I think, are our teachers. From the highest spiritual perspective, that we learn compassion, we learn understanding, we learn all kinds of things. I mean, think in your life, the worst things that have ever happened, the worst things that have ever been done to you, did you learn something from them? Now, I'm going to suggest that you did. You may still be learning something from it. If you did not learn anything from it, I'm going to also suggest that that experience has probably come around again in a different disguise, maybe a different cast of characters. But pretty much the same thing has happened again because we didn't get the growth from it. We didn't get the spiritual learning. Right? And so situations tend to repeat themselves when we don't get everything we're supposed to get out of the situation. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is not put up with bad behavior. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not inviting you to put up with really, really bad behavior. I think it's important that everybody learns to stand up for themselves, you know, and stand up for what you believe is right. And yes, it is difficult. It is difficult. But you know, you want to make your best, most sincere 
effort you can. Why? Because all of this opens the way for us to live a bigger, more successful, more prosperous, more abundant, more whole life. It's all connected. Ernest Holmes teaches us this principle that there is only one life. So it's not like you can have a life of abundance over here, but over here I get to hold on to all my little unforgivenesses. It's all connected. It's one life. So if you're holding this unforgiveness over here, that's absolutely one of the contributing factors to what's blocking the abundance in the rest of your life. So to say, you know, well, I just don't want to, or it, it doesn't feel good to me. These are not good reasons, OK? Jesus said, forgive 70 times 7. Now, remember back then, most people probably did not have a great grasp on multiplication. <laughs> so that was just a huge number. It was another way of saying, just keep doing it until there's nothing left to forgive. An infinite number until it's done. And why? Because when you've done that, you get free. So one of our teachers, Emma Curtis Hopkins, likes to say, every day the spiritual student must say, I forgive everyone and everything. Because people will say, well, I, I don't know. I, I can't think of anybody I need to forgive. OK, fine. I forgive everyone and everything. That will cover it. I forgive everyone and everything. I forgive everyone. Do I need to dredge up everything that's ever happened? No, absolutely not. I forgive everyone and everything. Because this is, and this is how you know you have forgiven. Because you feel a little more free. You know? I am set free out of my willingness to forgive. And the natural tendency of God, of spirit, of love, of the universe is to give to us in an even greater way. Let's pray. So we, thank you. We turn our attention inward for a moment to just remember that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite spirit, a spirit of love and peace and intelligence, a spirit of abundance and wholeness. I know that that spirit of God within each and every one of us is the most true, most real thing about us, that we are made in the image and likeness of the most high God. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that we are willing today to forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, either known or unknown. If it holds us back in any way, we surrender it willingly and allow that spirit of life that is within us to heal what needs to be healed so that we can have a greater experience of life and experience greater freedom in every area of our life. So if there's somebody in particular today that you have some accusation against, call them to mind now. See an image of them in your mind's eye and surround them with an energy of love. And whether you feel like it or not, tell them that you forgive them fully and completely. And see your own life improving because you've let something go. See your own life becoming more and more free. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, loved ones everywhere. And we remind ourselves that right where they are, the fullness and the allness of God's spirit is present. That they too are surrounded and filled with God's light and God's love and God's very healing activity. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world. In every corner of the globe, we let the light and love that's within our hearts and minds emanate out from us to touch all people in all situations everywhere, adding more love and more light and more healing to the world in which we live. We bless our church. We bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together in consciousness today, that there is raising up for each and every one of us, that we've let go, we've forgiven, we've moved forward, we've moved on. And that the universe recognizes that we've created space by letting something go. And the universe fills that space with something good. I accept this as the truth for each and every one. And I release this word. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen.